Hi. Hello, I'm Matt. Hi, Alan. Nice to meet you. Love your jacket. Thanks. Thanks. Look at that. Why didn't you wear something like that, Beardy? I, if I'd seen something like that in the we shop, should have, I would. We should have coordinate, coordinated I know, in the morning. next time. Next time. You're looking great, though, guys. What's Benedict wearing? <laughs> guys, I really love this film. What was it like working on a very predominantly male cast film? It was great. I mean, we had the luxury of nearly two weeks rehearsals, which is unheard of in this day and age. And that really bonded us all together. And, you know, you really felt that we were all there for a very similar reason. We wanted to tell a very important story about an incredible man and an unsung British war hero. And while it was, you know, very male orientated, you're right, but then obviously Kira came in and, and she has a certain, you know, a certain womanly grace that kind of, you know, softened, softened the butchness of, 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 uh, of Hut 8. <laughs> I think I was softening the butchness of Hut long before Kira Knightley was. Yeah, um, yeah, it was great, it was fun. You know, every, they're all such, you know, great characters, and um, in real life, and their actual characters are also mm. interesting too. So it was just fun to be around mm. that lot, really. Yeah. It was so well cast, though. <clears throat> mm. Every single one of you, just perfect for your role. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Nina Gold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it about the story that made you want to be a part of this film? Well, when I read the script, I was absolutely blown away that more people don't know about Alan Turing, about his life and as well the injustice that he suffered just because of his sexuality. He is one of the greatest British minds of all time. He's the forefather of the digital age and you know they think because of you know his endeavours along with the people of Bletchley Park they ended the war two years earlier with the saving of nearly 14 million lives. Alan Turing should be someone that we all know and should be really really celebrated and I think what, what drew me to the movie was that this was a celebration uh, about a great man and also a tribute to being different. There's a great quote in it which I really liked, which was sometimes it's people who no one imagines anything of um, that do the things no, no one can, can imagine. imagine. And it is, it does touch you. Are there any kind of other quotes maybe that inspire you in the same way? Well, um, no. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered what my dad told me a long time ago. But Go on, it's, on not, No, it's really not repeatable. What, what is it? <laughs> Don't leave the oven on. Yeah, no. I always I love I love the, the phrase. There's always an exception to the rule, you know, and that's kind of something that I always I always like. I that. will take that one away. I just associate that. that with dating. That's why. Um, but that's you know. What, is that what you say when you go into well, a date? Well, no, they always There's say always that an exception could... to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> that's from just you. He's just not like is that, you. Are, is that on your? Is that on your? Like, do you have any profiles, dating profiles? Yes, and is it but on it's your, not. Is that, is that what you say? Is that your is that your tagline? No. I bet you it is. Mine just says I love the Backstreet Boys, and um, I'm not who even doesn't? lying. <laughs> who doesn't? Um, I really want everyone to see this film, and I really want everyone to enjoy it as much as I did. Um, but perhaps for a younger audience who aren't familiar, like you say, with his with Alan Turing's hmm. story, how would you sell it to them and get them to really want to see it? Well, purely in a film, on a film basis, it's an incredibly entertaining story. Um, you know, it collects these genius minds together and they have, they have a time limit to crack this code and save lives are in their hands. It's kind of, you know, the Avengers in cardigans. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's I how I would get people I love it. Love it. <laughs> Why isn't that on the poster? <laughs> Matthew Beard called it Avengers in cardigans. So that's Avengers, how I'm selling it to the kids. Avengers in, yeah, here you go, kids. It's Avengers in cardigans. <laughs> that's amazing. Kid on Matthew Beard. <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. You know, it's the, the, the best, the elite collector together to save the world. So. Uh, so that's uh, purely on a film basis a reason for people to come and watch it. But also I think, you know, you, we spend every day as, as young people, I'll explain, uh, on computers and with our smartphones and whatnot. And I think it's important that we remember where these come from and, you know, the, the lead up to these inventions and that we appreciate them. And, you know, that's, that's, what I'd, that's how I'd sell it if you put me in a PR meeting. Yeah, the Avengers, Avengers in cardigans, <laughs> I think. Uh, I, I can't add to that. I think, uh, genuinely, if, if you want to learn about one of the greatest British minds of all time and an unsung war hero and watch watch his his life unfold and, and the reason, as you say, a forefather of the digital age, you know, the reason that we have all of the technology that we do today, you should go see this movie. Well, I mean, I, I loved Matthew's um, selling point more, but... That was good. <laughs> no, Avengers and Cardigans. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank I really pleasure. did enjoy Cheers. it.